I'm Kate Monson. I work for Thames 21 and on the Brick Project, I am the um, Canby Island Engagement Coordinator. Hmm. Challenging, too short, which is two words, I suppose, and aspirational. Um, most inspiring moments. So there's been a few, I would say, uh, but the one that springs to mind, I think, for me really is when we were doing this um, litter pick on one of the dikes on Canby Island. Um, they're these kind of culverted cement waterways that um, keep the water level on the island low, or well, as low as possible. Um, and they often get lots of rubbish in them because they're kind of run behind people's gardens or sort of, you know, they're kind of overgrown and hidden away. Um, and a young girl came along, she was probably about 15, 16, and she'd never been on a litter pick or, or really done any sort of environmental activities. She wasn't, that wasn't particularly an interest of hers, but she came along with her mum just to see what it was about. And as she was going along the, the, the waterway, she found a, a tin can and was going to pick it up with her litter picker and found a frog inside it that had been trapped inside it. So she freed this frog and she just thought it was just the best thing and um, was super excited. And I just thought it just really, and, and, and alongside while she was doing this, one of the really old, like an old councillor was there who's, you know, been working in kind of Canby community work for, for decades. Um, and it just really made me think like these moments of kind of, you never know what surprising things are going to happen. And that girl get, went away really inspired, really excited. She wanted to her own litter picker. Um, she's going to do more. Um, and that little frog just there allowing that moment to uh, happen because, you know, it got stuck in that tin can. And I just think it's th those sort of interactions that happen in those sort of places that aren't formal meeting places or, you know, formal consultation moments where the councillor and the young girl and the frog are all in the same place kind of interacting um and it's just it's just great <laughs> i mean the brick project is just full of surprises but i would say the one that really sticks out for me in terms of kind of like a finding that's been surprising so we've been doing this appreciative inquiry um speaking to local residents about um how prepared they are for flooding what their trust is in the local agencies to support them if a flood event happened and what their experiences of flooding are and people talk a lot about kind of flood memory being really important in a community to, to kind of um as as um, as an element of flood resilience and on Canby there was this really catastrophic flood in 1953 that you know a lot of the islanders some of them you know a lot of them lived through it or had family members that lived through it and rather than I'm finding rather than that kind of increasing flood preparedness I'm finding it's actually kind of almost obscuring what flooding is because when you ask people like oh have you have you experienced flooding or you know are you prepared for a flood they're imagining this catastrophic flood that comes over the wall that submerges all their houses and they're like oh no well no i haven't had flooding and then you start to talk to them a bit longer and you will find like oh yeah no but then that drain did thing and overflow and then my gar my garage did get flooded and oh my mum's bathroom there was sewage coming up through that because of the drains and, and it takes and so I just found it quite interesting, basically, that this flood memory on Canby doesn't always increase preparedness. It almost kind of reduces it or obscures um, exp obscures other flood experiences, which I think is quite interesting. And I'm not sure I've seen anyone really talking about that yet. So I feel like that could be something that, um, yeah, could be quite a useful finding of the Brick Project. You only get from these very sort of intimate, small scale on the ground conversations when you have the time to to tease out um, smaller stories. Um, so short term, we're really looking forward to a summer of lots of events on the island. Um, I've got a new support officer in role, which who's going to be able to be on the island loads and interact with loads of um, loads of pe local people. We've got some hoping to put some rain a rain garden in in one of um, the communities on the island that has. I mean, the whole island is <laughs> at risk of flooding, but um, there are some some roads that have real problem flooding so we're going to do some co-design workshops there we've got london rivers week coming up in july where we're going to do some engagement and events um and we're um doing more sort of consultation with the community around um, the redevelopment of a park that's going to have wetlands in it and a kind of information station around flood risk and flood mitigation and community um connections so there's a lot happening it's going to be a really packed next few months um, but i'm really, really excited to be spending more time on the island hopefully in the sunshine, hopefully, uh, 
just yeah getting out and about it's gonna be great yeah so long-term vision for the project of course is that um, we do manage to increase resilience um, on Canby and in all the other pilot sites that we've we've um, put these projects into place um, but of course I you know resilience can't be built and developed in just a year and a half two years so I guess you know my hope is that some of the seeds that we've um, put down and kind of the connections and the relationships that we've built and the networks that we're starting to develop on the island can continue can continue to nurture themselves and, and develop in, in their own ways. Um, I hope that um, some of the work that we've done with some of the flood management agencies and through the appreciative inquiry and kind of leading on how we understand engagement, which is very bottom up, very connected to community, very localized, um, is sending a message out to other groups and organizations that this is really, while it might take a long time and, and be quite labor intensive and, and um, require particular skills, is worth doing. Um, I think it would be great if some other organizations and agencies take that on board and start to experiment with um, slightly different ways of speaking to people and engaging with people and, and practicing um, resilience ideas in communities.